In this video, we're going to be comparing Mexico residency and Paraguay residency. This is something that comes up a lot in our group chats. And really, we have a lot of clients that are doing both Mexico residency and Paraguay residency, or they're doing one and they're interested in the other. So in this video, we're going to explain some of the differences and some of the similarities, specifically around the path to permanent residency. Obviously, there are other benefits to residency as well, you know, the ability to live in the country and so forth. But in this video, I wanted to focus specifically on the path to permanent residency and what that looks like in the different countries. Before we hop into it, obviously, there are a number of different programs, both in Mexico and in Paraguay. For example, in Paraguay, there is a direct to permanent residency path. It's the investor visa. Uh, We'll leave that one aside for now. And then for Mexico, there's also a path to immediate permanent residency, typically for people who are retirees or have really, really high uh, resources in terms of income and savings, they can go direct to permanent residency. But you, typically with Mexico, you have to be above um, a certain age level for them to give you permanent residency off the bat. So even if you're a millionaire, but you're only 25 years old, they're typically not going to give you permanent residency off the bat. In Mexico, you'll have to start as temp. So with both Mexico and Paraguay, in both countries, in 99% of situations, you're going to be starting as a temporary resident first. In Mexico, you'll be starting with one year temp, whereas in Paraguay, you start with two year temp. And then in Paraguay, after two years of temp, you renew to permanent residency. Okay, so two year path to permanent residency. Whereas in Mexico, you typically get one year temp to start, and then you renew for another three years of temporary residency. And then after four years total on the temporary residency, then you renew to permanent. So four years of temporary residency to get permanent residency. So again, Paraguay is a two year path to permanent residency, whereas Mexico is a four year path to permanent residency. And there's also a renewal that has to take place after the first year. Okay. Let's talk about the physical presence requirements during that period of time. Like how much time do you actually have to spend in the country in order to work towards permanent residency? Starting with Mexico, you really only need to physically be in Mexico during the renewals. So you get the residency, you have the residency card in your hand, and then you don't have to spend any time in Mexico during the next year but you need to be physically in Mexico for the renewal. Okay. So you only have to come back for the renewal and then you'll get the three year card that we uh, talked about a minute ago. And then, uh, and then you have to come back to renew to permanent after three additional years. And we actually had the case of a guy uh, a month or two ago who told me that he had not been to Mexico in three years. Literally he, he, he had the three year, extension and he hadn't been to Mexico once in three years and he flies to Mexico to go renew to permanent and he was able to renew to permanent successfully even though he had not been in Mexico at all. Effectively in Mexico you only have to be there for the renewals. There is no other physical presence requirement. Okay. In other words uh, if you were to start the process now and you got residency right now, you got to be back in a year and then, you know, four years from now. Okay. So call it once in 2025 and then once in 2028, I guess, um, which is pretty compelling, right? Pretty compelling to be able to work towards permanent residency in a country, spending zero time there physically. This is what we call a paper residency. And this is what makes Mexico residency really an absolute no brainer, especially for Americans and Canadians, because Mexico is so close, it's really quite easy to pop in for those renewals. Okay. So no physical presence and you can essentially get physical, sorry, you can essentially get permanent residency in Mexico. 
having only been in Mexico like less than a week, right? So that's amazing. And now moving on to Paraguay, what are the physical presence requirements in Paraguay? So this is something that has changed over time and might even change in the future. But what it looks like right now is that as a temporary resident, you have to visit Paraguay every 365 days to keep your temporary residency active. In other words, you have to visit for at least one day per year. Okay. And again, it's a two year path to permanent residency. So what this would look like is if you got uh, Paraguay residency right now, then you would have to visit, you know, once in the next year, and then you come back shortly before the, uh, the two years and you would renew to permanent. I think you can apply, uh, up to 60 days before it expires. Okay. So you visit once in the next year, visit for as long as you want. You just need to come into the country and stamp in so that there's a record with migraciones. And then you come back to renew to permanent. So really only after you get the residency, only one visit is really required between now and getting uh, and renewing to permanent residency. Okay. So again, very, very low physical presence. There are not that many countries in the world where you can maintain residency by only spending one day per year there. Honduras comes to mind, uh, Guatemala comes to mind, Panama as a permanent resident is uh, one day every two years, right? So one day every year for Paraguay as a temp resident is very generous. And then once you become a permanent resident, well, let's talk about the physical presence when you become a permanent resident. So in, in Paraguay, when you become a permanent resident, they recommend you visit once every three years. Okay. So as a temp resident, you visit once every year as a permanent resident, you visit once every three years to keep your permanent residency active. And then in Mexico, once you become a permanent resident, there are no guidelines. You do not have to visit Mexico anymore in order to keep your residency active. Once it's permanent, it's permanent. It does not expire. Okay. So in that sense, the Mexico permanent residency is more attractive because you never have to visit again. Um, whereas in Paraguay, you have to visit once every three years, but once every three years is honestly pretty reasonable if you ask me. Okay. What else should we talk about here? Um, costs. So Paraguay residency is typically more expensive to obtain. Um, we charge somewhere around 2K, depending on the package that you get for Paraguay residency at the time of this recording. Whereas Mexico residency, we charge around 1K at the time of this recording. So Mexico costs double. And obviously if you're just like a, a single guy or a single individual, um, you know, not that big of a difference, but if you're a family of four, it starts making a little bit of a difference, right? Because to get your family of four Mexico residency, maybe that costs 4k and for Paraguay residency to get a family of four costs around 8k. Obviously, uh, these are rough numbers, but just to give you an idea, uh, Paraguay residency does cost a little bit more. And then obviously, visiting the country just to get down there um, for the renewal for, you know, for your first visit and for the renewals, obviously it's a little bit more expensive to get to Paraguay because it's a little bit more out of the way and uh, only has a small fraction of the visitors per year. You know, millions and millions of people visit Mexico every year. I think something like 30 million, uh, whereas Paraguay is one of the least visited countries in South America. So obviously it makes sense that it's a little bit more expensive to visit Paraguay a little bit harder to get to. Okay. So if it were me and I was advising the average, you know, Canadian, American, European digital nomad, I would say do both. I mean, in both countries, uh, they're effectively paper residencies where you're working towards permanent residency with very little time on the ground. And they're also, you know, pretty cheap to obtain as well. 
and you're working towards permanent residency. So uh, in both cases, I think, I think people should do both, right? I think you, the listener, should get both Mexico residency and Paraguay residency. And then the question becomes maybe which one should I do, should I do first? Should I do one of them first or should I do both at the same time? And um, we can talk about that. Another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the actual residency process as well, like how to get the residency, because it's a little bit different. So with Paraguay residency, you apply in Paraguay. There's no interaction in your home country. There's no interaction with, say, the Canadian, the Paraguay embassy in Canada or the Paraguay embassy in the United States. There's no interaction there. It's just once you have your docs ready, you come to Paraguay right away. Whereas with Mexico, you apply from your home country, you apply where you are a resident. Okay, so if you are a Canadian, you apply at one of the consulates, the Mexican consulates in Canada. If you're American, you apply at one of the Mexican consulates in the United States, of which there are a lot, like 20 plus. Okay. So the Mexico residency process starts from the comfort of your own home, which is particularly appealing for families where the kids are in school or you can't get too much vacation, etc. Well, no big deal because you're doing it everything from essentially from your home state, right? So if you live in California, you apply from California. If you're from Massachusetts, you apply in Massachusetts. So Mexico is done from the comfort of your own home and you already know that you get the residency before you even fly down to Mexico because you'll be doing an appointment at the consulate in the United States. You go to the Mexican consulate and they're going to affix the visa to your passport book. So you get approved for the visa in your home country. And then the next step is you have, I believe, six months to fly down to Mexico and complete the second step which is to uh, get your photo taken at Migraciones and pick up your resident card. So it's kind of a two-step process. You start in the home country and then you fly to Mexico to complete the second step. Whereas in Paraguay, as I mentioned, uh, there's no uh, interaction with consulates or embassies. You just fly directly to Paraguay. And so in that sense, you could say like there's more uncertainty because you don't know if you're going to get the residency until you fly down there. but Everybody whose docs are in order gets the residency. People don't get arbitrarily denied. You're going to get the residency, especially if you work with My Latin Life to make it happen because, you know, we know how to prepare your application correctly. We know to, how to avoid any common pitfalls and make sure that you submit your application correctly. Okay, so Mexico, apply in home country. Paraguay, apply in Paraguay. So in that sense, for families, Mexico kind of makes more sense or people who, you know, the timing isn't right right now because they got to wait till summer vacation or whatever type of thing. Start Mexico right now. There's no reason not to start Mexico right now. But really with any residency, including Paraguay, you should start right now in the sense that you should start collecting your documents and then you fly to Paraguay when you have a window of time. Okay. And we only need you for a couple days on the ground in Paraguay in order to apply. So speaking of time on the ground required to get the residency in Paraguay, in order to apply, we need you on the ground for, well, it can be done in one business day, but obviously that's cutting it very close. So typically we recommend our clients to try to be there for one full week, AKA five business days, but realistically it can be done in one full day or as a less busy day, it can be done in two business days, but really try to do five business days just to give yourself a bit of a buffer. And then in Mexico, same kind of thing. It's often same day, especially if you go in the morning to the Migraciones office and they can print out your card same day, especially if you go to a Migraciones office that's not very busy and you go in the morning or sometimes they say, you know, come back the next day to pick up your resident card or come back, you know, come back Thursday type of thing. But again, usually it, it doesn't take longer than five business days, often same day, but could take a couple days. So both, both um, residency programs relatively equal in terms of time on the ground to get everything going, okay? 
What else? What did we not mention? Um, by the way, if you have questions about either of these processes, put your comments in YouTube, uh, in the you know comment box, leave a question, leave a comment. I'm looking at it all the time and we're happy to respond to any comments that you have. Or if you think that anything that I'm saying is inaccurate or you want to expand on kind of what I'm saying with um, some nuanced point, leave a comment. We love comments. Comments are great. Okay. Um, so I think that pretty much covers everything for this video. Oh, uh, actually coming back to, you know, who is best for what residency. So let's talk about that. So I would say for Americans, Mexico is the most no brainer because um, two points. One, Mexico is right on the border. So it's good to have residency in a country that borders your own country for a number of reasons. Also because Paraguay residency, the benefit, of, a lot of the benefit of Paraguay residency is that it can be a tax residency. But for Americans, that's not overly relevant because Americans, as I'm sure you know, are taxed on their worldwide income. So the Paraguay residency is less appealing in the sense that tax residency in Paraguay really doesn't do too much for Americans. It actually can in a, in a very advanced way in terms of allowing you to qualify for the bona fide residence test of the foreigner and income exclusion. If that sounds, uh, if you're confused by what I just said, book a call and we'll help you out with that. Um, but overall, uh, residency in Paraguay is a little bit less useful for Americans because they have no need for tax residency in Paraguay. Whereas for Canadians and Europeans and obviously any country that does not have citizenship based taxation, which is literally everyone except Americans, Paraguay residency is really, really valuable because you can become a tax resident of Paraguay, which can give you the option to leave your home country's tax system. So one of the things we do a lot is we help Canadians get Paraguay tax residency so that they can leave the Canadian tax system. We help Australians get Paraguay residency so they can leave the Australian tax system. So in that sense, Paraguay residency is the one I would do first for non-Americans. Again, so Americans, I would say, do Mexico residency first. For non-Americans, aka Canadians, Europeans, Australians, etc., I would say get Paraguay residency first. Even if you're happy with where you live now and Paraguay residency is, is basically a plan B and you don't immediately want to leave the tax system of your home country, either due to you know, capital gains concerns or you know, your job or, or whatever it is, Still, I still think Paraguay residency is the one that you should do first in order to have that as a backup plan. Because just because you get Paraguay tax residency, you know, you get the tax ID, which is called a RUC, the R-U-C, et cetera, doesn't automatically make you not a resident, a tax resident in your home country anymore. Obviously, that's something that you have to elect and there's a couple more steps there. But you want to get that whole plan B in place first. And you can actually be a tax resident of multiple countries at the same time, okay? So if you're not quite ready to leave the Canadian tax system yet for whatever reason, I, I still say get Paraguay tax residency just so you have that ready waiting for you as a tool in the toolkit so that when you're ready to leave the Canadian tax system, the Paraguay thing is already 100% set up. As a reminder, uh, My Latin Life can help you with Mexico residency. We can help you with Paraguay residency. We can help you with escaping Canada. We can help Americans with the foreign earned income exclusion and optimizing their taxes. So whatever your situation is, Latin America is the right place for you. My Latin Life, of course, we can help you make this happen. And the best way to get started is to book a call with us. There'll be a link in the description to book a call with My Latin Life to get this process started, answer any additional burning questions that you have regarding these residency programs and your internationalization plan in general. Or if you want to skip the call and get straight to the meat and potatoes, you can order the residency programs right off our website, mylatinlife.com. There's a buy now button both for Mexico residency and for Paraguay residency. We typically re recommend you do the call first um, so we can make sure it's a good fit but you can also just order the residency straight away. 
Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, shining some light on some of the differences between the Mexico residency system and the Paraguay residency system. And best of luck obtaining your permanent residency in Mexico and in Paraguay, and we'll see you down there.